It's the afternoon of April 25th, 2011. An eight-month-old Alexander Ellington lies in his crib as an EF3 tornado closes in. Moments later, the house comes crashing down, and it all goes dark. A firefighter quickly pulls Alexander from the wreckage and places him in Rachel Jean's arms. Noticing the baby fighting for breath, she rushes to the nearest ambulance, but it was too late. Alexander had suffered a fatal blow to the head and had passed away. Between April 25th and 28th, the U.S. experienced the largest tornado outbreak ever recorded. Over 360 tornadoes tore across 21 states, but April 27th stood apart. That day alone saw 219 confirmed tornadoes, 321 deaths, and more than 2,200 in critical condition. But just how did this happen? On April 25th, meteorologists saw the red flag stacking up. Gulf moisture surging north, a brutal upper-level jet crashing into the region, and explosive instability in the lower atmosphere. Conditions were textbook for a tornado outbreak, and forecasters raised alarms immediately. That night, the first tornado hit Arkansas. Originating 19 miles west-northwest of downtown Little Rock, a tornado gained EF2 strength and widened from 300 yards to 1,500 yards as it crossed Lake Momel. It reached its peak width of 1.35 miles at Black Oak Ranch Estates, Valonia, and heavily damaged dozens of homes and trailers. While most Valonia residents survived, some weren't so lucky. At 7.15 p.m., David and Catherine Talley looked out their window and saw a deadly tornado approaching their home. They immediately abandoned their trailer and took refuge in a nearby shipping container. Moments later, as the tornado swallowed the shipping container, David and Catherine were thrown 150 yards into Black's Lake No. 2, dying instantly upon impact. Nearby, two more residents, Craig Garvin and Charles Austin Mitchell, met a similar tragic fate. Craig and Charles, having nowhere to hide, did the only thing they could, grab onto something and hold on. But the thin walls of their trailer were no match for the 130 mile per hour winds. Their bodies were found 60 yards away from their homes in Faulkner County, Valonia, two days later. After hitting Valonia, the tornado wiped out the rural areas of Faulkner County and finally dissipated 1.14 miles north-northeast of Joy. April 26th ramped things up with supercells erupting across Mississippi, Missouri, and Tennessee. Hail, high winds, and more tornadoes. People thought they had seen the worst. April 27th, 2011. 1.10 a.m. The Storm Prediction Center has just issued a rare high-risk outlook for severe weather, something that only happens a few times a year. On television, James Spann was walking viewers through what could unfold. His ground team, Dr. Tim Coleman and Dr. Brian Peters, was watching the sky for visible signs of a tornado. Just after 2 p.m., near Jasper, they spotted a low, isolated cloud base, no rain beneath it, and slow, visible rotation. It was a rotating wall cloud. That's when they knew it was coming. They contacted the National Weather Service, and a tornado warning was issued for the city of Coleman immediately. In rural Alabama, tornado warnings are part of life. That's why when Lauren Menu heard one coming through her car radio, she didn't panic. Instead, she kept driving. At 2.40 p.m., the first tornado of the afternoon touched down just north of Lewis Smith Lake, southwest of Coleman and Lauren was directly in its path. She tried to get out of its way, but it was already too late. The tornado caught her car, and the only thing Lauren could do was hold on for dear life. The storm threw her vehicle into a nearby parking lot, but somehow she miraculously survived. Shaken but alive, she walked away, one of the lucky ones. The long track tornado traveled across Coleman County before tracking into Morgan and Marshall counties. It caused damage on the north side of Smith Lake along County Road, but more significant damage was observed near County Road 222 and 436, near Grandview. As the tornado tore across the rural, tree-covered landscape, it gained strength with terrifying precision, first peeling off roofs, then shifting entire houses off their foundations. Within minutes, whole buildings were reduced to rubble. This wasn't just any tornado, it was a monster. An EF4, with winds roaring up to 175 miles per hour and nearly a mile wide, one of the strongest in U.S. history. 
After ravaging Coleman County, the tornado briefly crossed the edge of Morgan County near Holaco before setting its sights on Marshall County. The tornado wreaked havoc along Hogjaw Road. A large storage shed with farm equipment was destroyed, and some of the large machinery was hurled 20 yards away. In Arab, Alabama, Chris Langston, a volunteer firefighter, was off duty when he got the call. A tornado had hit his own neighborhood. When he arrived, he found houses leveled and power lines draped across the road like ribbons. His neighbor's house, once a brick structure, was now a slab with a scattered foundation. They were in the bathroom. That's what saved them, he said. At 3.38 p.m., the worst was over for Coleman, Morgan, and Marshall. But things were not looking good for Marion County, 500 miles westward, where an EF-5 tornado had already touched ground at 3.05 p.m. The tornado began its path in southwest Marion County, touching down just southwest of Hamilton near Sipsy Creek, west of Alabama Highway 19. From the beginning, it was clear this storm was serious. But as it tracked northeast, it rapidly became more dangerous. By the time it reached U.S. Highway 43, southwest of Hackleburg, the tornado had intensified into a violent EF-4, with winds reaching up to 170 miles per hour. But it didn't stop there. As it moved parallel to the highway and approached the town of Hackleburg, the tornado strengthened again, this time into an EF-5. Winds were now howling at 210 miles per hour. It was one of the strongest tornadoes ever recorded in the state. Dave Smith, a longtime Hackleburg resident, remembers that moment clearly. He had stepped out onto his front porch just minutes before impact. Realizing what was coming, David took shelter under a pool table on the first floor of his home. When the tornado hit, debris slammed into the house with incredible force. David wasn't pulled into the funnel, but he was badly injured. Wood splinters and sharp fragments lodged into his back, and he was bleeding from his head. When the storm passed and he crawled out from under the table, everything was gone. The house he had lived in for 32 years had been reduced to rubble. By the time the tornado moved on, nearly 75% of Hackleburg was destroyed. 18 people in the town lost their lives. At 3.28 p.m., the tornado crossed into Franklin County, still moving northeast, now at an estimated speed of 69 miles per hour. Alabama had witnessed enough tornadoes in the last two days to know that this was serious, and families were scared for each other's safety. The tornado tore through about three miles of forested land, snapping trees and flattening vegetation before crossing Woodward Road, just southwest of Phil Campbell, Alabama. Still at EF-5 intensity, it ripped through the area, leveling homes and tossing trees through the air like matchsticks. It even ripped open a concrete storm shelter as it entered Phil Campbell, ending 21 lives tragically. Authorities were helpless as officers watched the tornado unleash its terror from inside the police department building. In one area, a 25-foot section of pavement was ripped from the ground. Chunks of asphalt were thrown nearly a kilometer away. Trees were stripped bare and debarked. One was found with a car wrapped around it. But the devastation wasn't over. The tornado exited Phil Campbell and continued through the countryside, reaching its peak strength near the community of Oak Grove. There, it cut a mile-wide path, claiming 27 more lives in Franklin County alone. Five months pregnant, Amanda Johns was enjoying a quiet afternoon with her mother, Renee Barry, and husband, Mitchell, when they got word of a tornado ripping across Alabama. The three huddled in the bathroom, holding on to each other, desperately waiting for the worst to be over soon. Talking about her mother, Amanda said, We each put a pillow over our heads. Right before it hit, she put her pillow over my belly. Then, she started praying. First, they heard the loud noise of debris hitting their home, and suddenly, the tornado ripped off the roof above them. The last sound Amanda remembers is her mother saying, I love you, and in the next second, her house disintegrated around them. Amanda's mother didn't survive, but Amanda and her husband did. Mitchell was found unconscious under the debris with two bones sticking out of his right arm and a bad puncture wound in his left knee. Amanda, on the other hand, was recovered 15 feet from the house, her right foot mangled and a rupture in her placenta. But her pregnancy continued until the baby was delivered four months later. 
After Franklin County, the tornado pushed onward into Lawrence County, striking the small town of Mount Hope. Among the residents was Gary Dobbs, a meteorologist for WAAY-TV and a lifelong local. He saw the tornado from his window, but before he could get off his live stream and take shelter, it hit. His house was torn apart, and he was thrown 40 feet from where his living room once stood. Gary survived, but with severe injuries. He was hospitalized in critical condition. Later, he described his gut-wrenching experience in an interview. Apart. Some of the loudest uh, roaring noises I've ever, ever experienced. The wind, the force of that wind was just indescribable. <laughs> this, this is actually the bedroom. The tornado kept moving, its path carrying it through Langtown, Moulton, Trinity, and parts of Morgan County, then across Wheeler Lake into Limestone County. Finally, it entered Madison County, where it dissipated around 5.07 p.m. The horror lasted for one hour and 45 minutes, killing 71 people, making it the deadliest single tornado ever to strike Alabama. Meanwhile, at 3.47 p.m., an EF-5 wedge tornado with winds of up to 205 miles per hour struck the town of Smithville, Mississippi. The tornado began three miles west-southwest of Smithville along the tennessee Tombigee Waterway but it quickly intensified as it approached town. Alarms were raised so residents could take cover before disaster hit. Unfortunately, the tornado proved merciless, tearing even storm shelters apart. As the roaring storm swept over Smithville, it destroyed everything in its path, from scouring the ground to uprooting trees and sweeping away well-anchored brick homes. This tornado was brutal. 69-year-old Jimmy Cowley was on Mississippi Highway 25 when he saw a tornado in his rearview mirror. The odd gray mass was half a mile wide, and as he sped away from the barreling monster, power lines along the highway snapped like the crack of a whip. Cowley looked over his shoulder again and again, thinking the storm would sweep in from the west, but it caught him from behind. First, the right window of his Chevy pickup blew up, and suddenly all the windows exploded. Cowley hit the brakes and held tight to the wheel, making a hard left turn into a driveway. The back of his truck lifted and was slammed onto the ground on the right side. A piece of tin flew through the truck and gashed his head open. Still tucked in his seatbelt, Cowley simply covered his head with his hands, waiting for the tornado to pass. He was lucky enough to survive, but 16 people were killed in Smithville that day. The tornado turned northeast of town and moved into Itawamba County slowly weakening to an EF-1 on this path. It continued across the Alabama state line into the rural community of Shotsville, where it regained strength and claimed 24 more lives. Moving north towards Hamilton and Franklin County, the tornado eventually dissipated near the town of Hodges at 4.32 p.m. The tornado lasted for 41 minutes and left behind a 37-mile-long path of devastation. By the time it was over, 23 people were dead and over 130 were injured. The losses were devastating, but the worst was still coming. That same day, one of the most intense tornadoes of the 2011 super outbreak tore through Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, claiming hundreds of lives. It became a living nightmare forever etched into Alabama's history. The tornado was produced by a supercell thunderstorm that began in Newton County, Mississippi at 2.45 p.m and traveled almost 380 miles, producing multiple violent tornadoes. At 5.10 p.m., an EF-2 tornado with winds of up to 125 miles per hour entered Tuscaloosa County just north of CR-60, northwest of Ralph. However, as it crossed the Black Warrior River, it intensified to a violent EF-5 tornado, and that's when the destruction began. One by one, every building, store, and home in its path was swept off the ground. The Tuscaloosa County Emergency Operations Center, several small restaurants, and multiple stores were destroyed. At the same time, residents like Ryan Chandler were trying to help others to safety. 58-year-old John Nero was watching the TV news coverage of the Twister as it approached Tuscaloosa. He stepped outside and saw it in the distance, getting larger every second. But it wasn't until the front door jammed shut that he realized just how strong the winds were. He had to wrench it open with his foot braced against the frame. 
Inside, he grabbed his wife and kids and dove beneath the stairs. Then the tornado hit. A violent pull from above tried to rip him away as his wife and daughter clung desperately to his legs, fighting to keep him grounded. Nero's family survived, but when they came outside, the second floor of their home was gone and their cars were totaled. The winds were so strong that debris was reported to be falling from the sky across Birmingham, over 20 miles away in Jefferson County. Moving through the Cedar Crest neighborhood, the tornado crossed McFarland Boulevard into the University Boulevard in the Alberta City community. The Alberta Elementary School was completely destroyed, with only a few portions of the walls still standing. The tornado also turned the Alberta Park Shopping Center into piles of rubble on the foundation. Around 6 p.m., the tornado moved east-northwest across the western and northern suburbs of Birmingham. Like a beast unleashing its full fury, the tornado was at its peak width and intensity. As it tore through the west side of Birmingham, the tornado swept away everything in its path. And just when everyone thought the worst was over, the tornado became violent once again as it reached the Cordova area. Moving northeastward out of the Concord, the tornado entered the Pleasant Grove community and the McDonald Chapel community. The damage at McDonald Chapel was massive, mainly due to the pier and beam foundation method of construction used in the area. Even though the tornado had reduced to an EF2 when it struck, the homes couldn't withstand winds of that magnitude. By the time the tornado reached Interstate 65, the storm had lost most of its energy, and it finally lifted at 6.14 p.m., about two miles north of the city of Tarrant. This tornado claimed so many innocent lives. 44 people were killed in Tuscaloosa, with an additional 20 deaths in Birmingham. Apart from the people who lost their lives, more than 1,500 were left injured. By the time the skies cleared in late April 2011, more than 360 tornadoes had torn across 21 states, from Texas to New York. Entire towns were flattened, more than 320 lives were lost, and thousands of families were left with nothing but rubble. Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Georgia were among the hardest hit, facing storms so violent that some communities were erased overnight. It was one of the deadliest and most destructive tornado outbreaks in American history. A brutal reminder that when nature turns violent, it leaves scars that last for generations. Thanks for watching.